excited to talk today about one of my favorite pieces of all time, um, not just of the incredible artist Odile Redon, but um, just of all the paintings that I look at and have looked at throughout my life. This is a piece I've returned to many times for many years for inspiration. And one of the first things that I think about when I look at a piece like this is the different, I guess you could call them genres, of Odile Redon's work. One, and this is how I think of it, I'm not sure if historians think of it this way, but one of these sort of groups or genres is his black and white etchings or drawings. And in that group, there are a lot of imaginary and nightmarish um, imagery from his, often from his dreams. And then he has these really tiny, intimate and in scale pastel works, as well as some oil paintings. And oftentimes that imagery, the color is incredible, but the imagery is often very biblical. What excites me then about this piece um, is that it's part of this other genre where he starts to blur the line between the decorative arts and painting. This piece itself is sort of one panel or one part of a larger commission where he was asked to decorate the interior of a home. So the paintings were both paintings, but they were also these panels that fit into the architecture of the space. Something that's so interesting to me when he starts to work on, I guess what we're gonna call the decorative uh, genre of his painting practice, is that that's when things become sort of very progressive and almost contemporary feeling. And I think part of that reason is the way he breaks up the space. Um, there is no sense of gravity, uh, even though he's painting a landscape. And in this piece, you can see there's a tree there, there are leaves and flowers. And so the imagery itself might allude to landscape, and yet the space starts to break down completely. Flowers are kind of floating, almost as if they might be wallpaper, and yet they don't go so far as actually being a pattern. There's still a composition in them. And these are ideas that I think haven't really been, or weren't really explored until much more recently. And that's why I think it's so exciting for a contemporary painter like myself to think about his very new ways of thinking of space in a painting. The other thing that starts happening in this painting is the way he thinks about color. He wanted to make this enormous pastel work. And so the thing about pastel, and since I'm an artist that uses pastel as well, I, I think about this too. Pastel is kind of one of the most intense ways of depicting color because it's almost pure pigment. And yet this piece isn't pastel, and yet he described it as a pastel work, which I think then also implies that he's thinking about pigment and color as being, if not one of the most, maybe the most important part of a painting. And that's also interesting to think in terms of his sort of broader practice because he has these separate etchings and drawings that have no relationship to color, and yet they're part of the subconscious. And yet his small pieces that are pastel, as well as his bouquets of flowers, uh, oil paintings, the first thing that sort of captures your, your eye is the intensity of the pigment. So this piece itself, one of the reasons why I love it also is in terms of color, the feeling that yellow gives is almost, and the scale of it, is almost as if you know, the sun were a blanket and were really wrapping around you. It's not the color of the sun in that it washes everything out and heats everything up so much that you can't see it. It's really that pigment of yellow. And every time for many years that I sort of walk up to this piece again, I still have that feeling of this enveloping yellow. And I think that's what he was trying to accomplish, is how can color, um, when it's really covering the wall, become this atmosphere and this theatrical space that the viewer can actually become a part of. It's kind of like walking up on stage and saying, I'm, I'm part of this, um, this uh, presentation. But I also want to show you some of the details, because I think even though it, it exists in this enveloping uh, process or in this enveloping effect, there are also these sort of microcosms within the painting. And so areas like this, for instance, where the flowers start becoming really dense, there is this kind of contraction and release that happens throughout the painting. So sometimes the flowers become dense and then they spread out again. 
And I think that's his sort of logic of space and how you move through things. The armature of the piece, or the armature of the composition, something that a teacher of mine uh, many years ago uh, started talking to me about, Larry Pittman, um, is how do you think of what's holding up the composition? And I love that what's holding up this composition is almost invisible. It's these trees on the right side. And these trees are, you know, they're strong, they're heavy, they're extremely vertical, so they, they kind of anchor everything. And yet, they're the most transparent part of the painting. The densest parts of the painting are these floating floral marks. And again, I think one of the interesting parts is when things get really dense and then when things start to sort of disappear. And you see this atmosphere up here is actually very thin. And there are a lot of really thin parts to this piece, except for then, again, these areas here with the flowers where things become really dense. And then the one last thing I, I'd, I think I'd like to say is, um, you know, this idea of how he starts to blur the decorative arts with painting I think is really important. One of those things is he's kind of saying that there is no hierarchy. Or maybe there is, and the decorative arts is part of that. But I find it interesting that both his bouquets of flowers and, and other pieces that I've seen, and then these sort of panels become this, this kind of imagery where um, space is actually thought of in this, and color is thought of in this way that I don't think I have seen in many artists in the last 100 years. So this is one of my favorite pieces for that reason.